what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to my channel in this video I'm gonna be going over five beginner projects that I think you guys should add to your list especially for individuals who are trying to become solution architects or even engineers who just want to get a better understanding of AWS these are five beginner projects that I think will be beneficial for you and especially if you want a project to add to your resume I think this will be beneficial for you let's start off with number five so I think you should start off with a static website you know HTML CSS um, JavaScript um, and just put that into an S3 bucket and make sure that you host it on your S3 bucket so what does this mean right so I have say for instance a next project and what this next project is gonna allow me to do is gonna allow me to build that project export it into static files which like I said is HTML CSS and JavaScript and once I put it into S3 bucket I can now host it through S3 so now it will be able to have its own URL and I'll be able to see the project working on a host hosted by AWS so that's an easy easy project that you can do it'll give you an idea how to create a bucket how to you know statically host a website using a bucket because you got to go into the permissions you got to enable it you got to change the policies um, and you could also integrate a project that you're already doing like a UI that you're already doing and now you can have that inside of this bucket easily hosted and now that can communicate with whatever backend services that you already created so I think that's a pretty big easy beginner project you can do and I'm actually making a video right now on how to get that done I actually have an article as we speak on how to get that done you can just follow that article down in the description and I show pictures on how to do it step by step and it's really easy you can probably get that done in less than 30 minutes so project number four is generating a trigger based on an upload to S3 now it doesn't have to be S3 I said S3 because I, I currently have a video um, on my channel on how to do that of how to generate how to um, trigger a lambda function um, whenever you upload to S3 um, so you guys can I'll leave a link somewhere for that but it doesn't necessarily have to be S3 it can be anything it can be an upload to an you know AWS relational database service it can be to DynamoDB if you want it can be whatever service that lambda can interact with which, which is a lot but um, I would say that I would recommend you know creating a trigger and having experience using lambda having experience using another service and then have you know those services interact with each other that's the whole basis of why I feel like this is a great beginner project because when you're using AWS for the most part you're gonna have services that interact with each other so if you can you know create that on a very basic level such as creating a trigger using lambda um, I think it'll give you a better understanding because again you would have to create a role through lambda that will allow you to interact with another service because you know that other service can be you know blocking off any other communication from uh, another service so you will have to create a policy that will allow that so that's another thing that you can learn in the process which I also go over in my s3 and lambda video so I'll leave a link for that but like I said, I'm not forcing you to watch my videos. I'm just saying get that understanding of services interacting with each other. And I feel like I have a great example of that. So beginner project number three is uploading an API to AWS. So you can use a service like Elastic Beanstalk, which, you know, will take in a backend. You can upload your backend to it directly, or you can have a container. If you know how to do that, create a container and, you know, use that container image for, um, you know, Elastic Beanstalk. Um, and then it will host it and then it will provide you an API um, URL so then you can make calls to it you can even connect it with your static um, website that you <laughs> uploaded to S3 to the S3 bucket you can also have that communicate with your Elastic um, Beanstalk API um, so like I said services interact with each other so learn how to put an API or back in and, and create an API using Elastic Beanstalk and then you can also take API Gateway and make sure that certain requests are routed to the proper um, backend URL. So you can have two, three services that interact with each other. But I would just say start off with just you know hosting your um, API using Elastic Beanstalk and uh, going from there. And it's, it's not too bad. I'm actually gonna create a, a video on that, and and I also have an article on that as well. But I would say that's another idea that's you know pretty quick and pretty great to know how to do. So step number two, right? 
let's make a serverless application, right? So let's host our um, application, our static website um, using S3. Let's create a couple of Lambda functions and then let's create an RDS instance, a Postgres database using AWS RDS. Well, if we want it to be NoSQL, just use Dynamo, that's no problem. But let's you know create that and then now when a user signs in, right, we can send them an email saying welcome, or when a user you know puts in some input and they press add, let's send another Lambda function to insert that data into the RDS database. So, I mean, that's that will be a great, great project or a great beginner project to have so many services communicating with each other. And you can even put an API gateway in front of your Lambda function, or to, well, you, I think you have to at that point, right, to route it to the specific function that you want. Um, so you have four services interacting with each other. Have the proper policies. Make sure that it's locked down and secure. Um, because we do not want anything leaking out. We don't want anybody that doesn't have the proper access to be able to touch your information. And everything is hosted on the cloud. You have no infrastructure that you need to handle. You didn't have to create a, a, a Node.js um, backend. You didn't have to create a Spring Boot application, right? Everything is hosted on the, on the cloud and everything was you know uh, created from there. All you have to do is go in and code and write in a couple settings and, and you're good to go. So I would say that's, you know, a, like on my list, that's probably the the second best thing that you can do um, because you have your hands on so many different applications. And number one, and it's not necessarily the hardest thing to do, but I think it is pretty cool to know how to do because a lot of individuals, you know, when it comes to AWS, they automatically think of a pipeline. So what I would recommend you doing is creating a CID, CICD pipeline that will take an application, like connect to a GitHub repository, or you can make a repo in AWS and make sure that you set up a trigger whenever you upload, right? It it starts up that pipeline process of, you know, running some tests or, you know, it starts up that process of deploying it. Um, you know, maybe that's an API, maybe that's a website. Um, you can choose, but, you know, creating a pipeline is pretty cool because now you have some DevOps experience. Now when somebody say, hey, create a pipeline, right? Make sure that it's secure, create a pipeline, connect it to this repository. You know how to do it or you know the terminology and you know what to expect. It's not, like I said, it's not the hardest um, idea in this you know, list, but I think it's still, it's probably the most different out of the other four, right? But it's also um, you know, a cool thing just to know. And it's, it's something that you're for sure going to have to know how to do, actually understand a little bit, because um, I already had to create three pipelines myself um, in my short time. I'm not even a DevOps engineer, but I've also had to write a couple of pipelines or make some adjustments. So. Um, it's better to know early on before you even get started on how to do that. And if you're trying to become an AWS engineer, solution architect, you're definitely going to know or want to know how to do it. So um, software engineers should just know like a general basis of what they want to do. Like they should know multiple things. It shouldn't just be one thing that they know. But um, yeah, if you're a DevOps engineer, if you're a software engineer, um, solution architect, uh, these are things that will be cool to know. Uh, maybe you don't want to code. You could just learn, like, learn how to do it. No, no, learn the general basis of how to do it, where the services are, what the services do. Um, but I think this will be five cool ideas to help you guys get a foundation on AWS. And you can even add some of this stuff to your resume. So go ahead and subscribe. Like I said, some of these um, ideas are already in article form. I'm going to create videos for some of them. And some of them I already did create videos for. But um, some of them are articles. So I'll leave that in the description if you guys want to read up more on it. Hope you guys enjoy that. Leave a like, subscribe, and then check me out. And more AWS content is coming out and more engineering content is coming out. I have UI stuff, I have backend stuff, I have AWS stuff, which is cloud stuff. Um, so I'm just continually learning and then providing what I learn. So hope you guys enjoy.